What is shaking, Internet? This is Salts bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Protectors of the Endless LFR Guide. The Protectors are the first boss of the final raid in Tier 14 rating, the Terrace of Endless Spring. The trash before the Protectors is mostly ignorable. They'll spawn little terror ads, but otherwise there's absolutely nothing to note here. There will be four packs before the boss becomes active, so kill them all, and then you can engage the bosses. This is actually a three boss fight with three phases. To be clear, there are three bosses here, and they can all be killed individually, which allows you to kill them in different orders, etc. But, just so you know, in LFR there is no reason to kill them in anything but the easiest order, which I will detail. For those of you wondering, there is no elite LFR loot, which kind of sounds like an oxymoron, so just do it the easy way I describe. As for the fight, it's fairly simple. There are three bosses, and each has its own set of moves. For phase one, each boss has a single move they'll be doing. Once any of the bosses die, the others get healed to full, and phase two starts. In phase two, the remaining two bosses use the ability they had in phase one, and gain one new ability each. When another dies, the last one gets healed to full, and gains one last ability, for phase three. In addition, they will all do more damage in each phase with everything, so be aware. I'll briefly talk about each boss and their different moves from each phase before going into the overall strategy. First up is Protector Kao Lan. Kao Lan, it kinda sounds like Kai Lan. Never mind. He starts off with a DOT that he places on random raid members. This DOT stays until the Protector dies, meaning it will eventually be placed on your entire raid given enough time, because it never goes away. In phase two, if he's still alive, he'll start putting down damaging void zones. These again don't go away until the boss dies, so just again, stand in them. Uh, if you keep the protector around until phase 3, and he's the only boss alive, he will spawn an orb that does damage to everything within 30 yards of it, meaning you'll run away from the orb if you're close. If you follow my advice, you shouldn't have to worry about any of these abilities at all, really, even the first one, since he will die first. Well, Next is Elder Regale. This is the lightning boss. His basic attack is usually is actually a move called Lightning Bolt, which is an interruptible spell cast on random raid members. This basically means that he doesn't need to be tanked unless you interrupt him, which he might throw a few melee attacks out. Still, best to be safe and have the off tank pick him up. Uh, try to interrupt Lightning Bolt if you can, but it's not a priority. Additionally, in all phases, he will cast light. He will be casting Lightning Prison, which stuns random targets and anyone close to them within eight yards, I believe. If you see someone with Lightning Prison that's close, then run away from them. In Phase 2, if Regale is still alive, he will begin casting Lightning Storm, which is a kind of fun, unique ability. Basically, he does a lot of damage to everyone close to him within a certain radius, then everyone a in a ring around that, then everyone in a ring further out, etc. You can almost entirely avoid this damage simply by standing far enough out and running in when the lightning disappears. I uh, will might talk about this just in a little bit. In Phase 3, he gets a stacking raid-wide debuff that deals a lot of damage and increases over time, making it a burn phase. The last boss is Elder Asani. He starts with Water Bolt, which is an interruptible spell that basically replaces his melee attack, uh, similar to Regale. He'll cast it at random, meaning he doesn't really need a tank, like Regale. Uh, this should be interrupted as much as possible, since it actually does damage to a random raid member and anyone close to them in a small radius meaning it'll likely do more damage overall to your raid than Regale's Lightning Bolt attack that's interruptible. Uh, additionally, Asani will create little water globes that fall slowly from the sky, healing any boss that is close to them when they hit the ground. This is important since you have to consistently move the boss that you're tanking away from the globes so that they won't get healed. He'll keep casting this throughout the fight, so always keep the boss away from these globes that you're trying to burn down. In Phase 2, Asani will begin summoning targetable globes of water. I believe they're called Corrupted Water Globes. Uh, while these globes are alive, the boss will hit and cast more frequently, uh, meaning more damage for you, or more damage to you. Uh, these should be burned down as fast as possible. Additionally, when they die, they will give a buff to any raid members nearby that increases haste, so mm, even more incentive to kill them ASAP. In Phase 3, Asani will do the exact same thing that Regale did, which is a stacking debuff on the raid that increases damage taken, turning it into a burn phase. Now, now that you know all the possibilities of the fight, let me tell you how to execute. To start with, there really isn't much need for two tanks in this fight. 
Uh, the only problem might arise when a DPS isn't hitting the right target and the spellcasters are interrupted, which could result in some melee hits on that DPS. But otherwise, a single tank really should be all you need for this fight. First, your entire raid should focus down Protector Cow Lan. Uh, killing him first will stop the DOT that he places on random raid members, and uh, it avoids all the movement that's needed for if he's still up during Phase 2 and Phase 3. The best way to do this is to mark him with an X or a skull, and hopefully your DPS will get the point. During this phase, you should completely tank Cow Lan, try to, um, you should completely tank Cow Lan, try to interrupt Asani as much as possible, and make sure that no falling water globes land near Cow Lan. Uh, once Cow Lan is dead, the fight gets slightly more interesting. So, just to make sure, phase one, you have Cow Lan there, you're tanking him, you're going to basically be dragging him away from the globes that spawn. Uh, if you have deadly boss mods, it should tell you this. There you go. Like I said, once Cow Lan is dead, the fight gets slightly more interesting. Your next best bet is to focus down Regale, as he will do a lot more damage than Asani to your raid. Uh, during this phase, you're going to try to interrupt both bosses, Regale and Asani, as much as possible, as that's your only real way to get them to hit you. Otherwise, you won't be very useful as a tank. Also note that you have to interrupt uh, whoever you're ta fighting, hopefully Regale at this moment. You have to interrupt him to make them move from their spot. So basically you want to make sure that when a globe of water goes down, so when, uh, when a globe of water is coming down to heal that person, you have to interrupt them and then pull them away from that spot so that they aren't getting healed. Uh, let's see. Additionally, you're going to have to start avoiding Lightning Storm, and you're going to have to learn the pattern to avoid taking too much damage from those rings. Like I said, Lightning Storm is the, the lightning donuts, as you will. Starts in the big circle in the middle, you want to stand outside that circle. As soon as the circle goes away, you want to run inside and not get hit by the next donut, and then the donut, and then the donut. You get, it goes outward. Uh, it does a lot of damage, so you even in LFR, so you do not want to get just standing in there. Uh, once Regale is down, then there's going to be a lot of damage going out to the entire raid. Uh, you need to continue interrupting Asani, moving her away from the Fallen Globes, and destroying her summoned globes. Uh, just keep pummeling her and moving her away from the healing globes that she continues to spawn, and this phase should be over very quickly. That's pretty much all for the fight, folks. The healing globes are what extend the fight the most, but the biggest issue I've seen in LFR is actually the Lightning Storm Rings as they do quite a bit of damage if they are not moved out of. Otherwise, it's a very simple and straightforward fight. Uh, in normal, all these strategies still apply. There is a way to make uh, the loot drop better by killing a different order of bosses, but I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, just know that the numbers are higher, and it's more important not to let the bosses get healed. Uh, depending on the order you kill the bosses in, it could be a completely different strategy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this guide for dummies. Please like, favorite, subscribe, all that jazz. And as always, you keep it salty, Internet.